Hello, 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 and welcome to this, which is fight number 28 of my FSX FS Economy Career Mode. Uh, today we're currently sat on the runway at Sangafa, Vanuatu. Uh, we're going to continue getting this uh, Cessna 172 back to England, back to my own base of Manchester. I've only done one fight, I've been concentrating on other things. Um, been trying to get this new Euro Truck Simulator 30 mile per hour maximum speed limit up and running. So if that's what you're into, give that a, a look see. Don't forget, if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell notification for any further publications. And give me a thumbs up. It helps my little channel out. So today's jobs, we're going to be taking to Santo Picoa, Luganville, Vanuatu another island and we're going to be taking these two air taxi passengers and this priority mail total journey of 115 nautical miles takes us about takes us about an hour and 20 minutes flight time uh, we're not going to bother with the weather because i'm recording this on a sunday afternoon and currently the time in vanuatu is just gone midnight so the wind conditions are going to be historical and it's a direct flight so i'm not going to bother going into a little nav map show you the route we'll add the selected assignments to my flight and we'll jump straight into the cockpit i'll see you on the runway oh here we are we're currently sat on the active grass runway which is runway 32 all the passengers are loaded we've done all our checks just going to talk to atc the ifr flight so no doubts when we do get closer to Luganville. We'll get instructions on which runway to land on. I think we're going to be landing on runway 30. So I'm just going to start the engine and contact ACC. Okay, we're going to be So just that noise that with the squawk cord. We're gonna be travelling at four thousand feet the whole journey. And and we'll probably descend to about two thousand feet and we get to about five miles, five minutes. Well, when we get to um, about five minutes away from the airport, being about 2,000 feet, then I'll take over manually. I descend at about 400 feet per minute coming into the airport. Hopefully, we'll have a nice, decent landing. These passengers. I'll just extend my flaps. I'll take off into traffic. Right, runway 32, and we're departing to the no north. Matter. It'll take us a bit to get up to speed with it being a grass runway. Just climb so we avoid the trees. Positive climb. As you can see, pretty basic runway, grass runway. That's how we're heading for 326.
Right, I want to start talking about something that's close to my heart. I've um, been a fan, supporter of Bolton Wanderers for many years now. I went to my first game in the 1978-79 season when I was 8 years old. Bolton Wanderers have had a chequered history, They've had a successful history. Uh, they were founded in 1877, uh, one of the founder members of the Football League, 1888. They reached the FA Cup final in 1894, 1904, losing on both occasions. And the first success came in 1923. They won the FA Cup. Uh, they won it again in 1926 and 1929. And from then, they've been a bit of a yo-yo club, bouncing between Division 1 as it was, Division 2, Division 3, even down to the depths of Division 4, until they had a bit of a resurgence back in the mid-90s, up to press. But now, the club that I've supported as a man and boy and it's been reported in the news over the last few months, last few years actually. Um, they got promoted to the Premier League in 2001 and they spent 11 years in the Premier League making the UEFA Cup twice and in 2012 they were relegated to the Championship. This started a downward spiral for the club. Now in 2003 Eddie Davis, a local businessman, Corba and he self-funded the club and in 2016 he stopped all financing of the club. They were still paying the wages, still paying the staff's wages and everything but they had a couple of um, HMRC petitions and this was, it's not the beginning of the end but it's the beginning of the beginning of the end, I can see. Now the man who's took over at this moment in time, at that moment in time, the man who took over was Ken Anderson. And nobody knew a Ken Anderson. And from what I've seen of the gen of the book, I have no feelings towards him, but it just seemed to me that he was a bit of a shyster. He was in it for what he can get. He's the owner of the club, but he pays himself half a million pounds a year in wage. And under his tenure, we've been to the High Court on eight occasions, winding up petitions. Now, up to, up to press at this moment, um, the players went on strike, which is the second time they've done this, because they did it in a pre-season game at St Mirren at the beginning of this season, 2018-2019, and they've done it again prior to the Brentford match. Their wages haven't been paid, the players to staff, uh, the players had a walkout in support of the non-playing staff so they got their wages. Now to me, Ken Anderson is still the owner of this football club and according to his reports in December he was advised by police not to attend any home matches, any away matches for fear of reprisals. So this, this guy, Ken Anderson, has then turned around and said right well you know, if you don't want me there, I'm not going to put any money in. He had no money to start with. He bought it on the cheap. He bought it with a loan. So he had no money to start with. Now, how this guy has got through the EFL fit and proper director's test, only God knows. To me, the, the guy is just a born liar. He blames everybody apart from himself. There's nobody to blame apart from himself, but he's the one who blames everybody about everything. Um, there's been two protests against him, one against the West Brom, one against West Bromwich Albion, which was live on Sky, and there was tennis balls thrown onto the pitch, and there was a protest against him before the Reading match. Now, this guy turned around and, and said, this has cost the club an extra £20,000 for policing these protests. Now, the thing is, Ken, in my eyes, you're still the owner of the club. You are still liable for any expenses, any finances that go on at the club. You're still going to get, you're still taking your wage, and your son's taking his wage, who was, who was the head of player recruitment and all he's recruited is absolute dross. You've got a manager that's completely inadequate, who's not got a clue, he's just so one-dimensional. I'm a fan, I'm a supporter, and I'm just 
a, a small minority of of this and I don't know how many people will say it but to me he's the most hated man in Bolton so now we're coming up to the bid's been accepted the club take over um, from Lawrence Bassini I don't know much about this guy I was a noisy used to be an owner at Watford <coughs> and he's been declared bankrupt twice but now it's all tit for tat he's this Mr. Bassini has said yes I've got the funds for the wages to be paid but because they are still under an HMRC embargo the bank accounts are frozen so wages can't be paid into the Bolton Wanderers accounts from this gentleman and funds can't be paid into the Bolton Wanderers accounts from Mr. Bassini even though he's not the owner of the club yet now from Watford supporters they've told us to be wary of this guy and nobody knows what's going to happen I know what I don't want to happen and I know what I'd like to see and I'd like to see somebody who has the interest of Bolton Wanderers at their heart and not just in it as a money making venture I want somebody who would come in and finance the team and take us back to those great heights what we used to have now I've been there through the ups and I've been there through the downs and this is an all time war these two Ken Anderson and Lawrence Bassini need to bang their heads together because now it's just arguments and tit for tat and you did this well you did this and you said that and you said that and now Ken Anderson's giving Lawrence Bassini deadlines to come up with the funds for, to buy the club but Ken I know you won't I know you're not going to watch this you won't watch this but the deadlines for players to get their wages passed and you've missed them so you can't tell anybody anything and I just thought my my club will survive because we've seen other football clubs go the same way and they've had to re-establish themselves in the lower leagues <coughs> there's been Hereford United, Halifax, Chester uh, one was, one's already I know there was only in one of the lower tiers North Phobia United they've gone that was over a £7,000 debt I just want these two to get it sorted out let's make Bolton great again and I don't care who the owner is all I want is somebody who cares for the club because if you care for the club the fans will care for you and Ken Anderson has just made himself the Ken Anderson has made himself an enemy and that enemy is 20,000 strong and they go under the name of the Bolt Wanderers supporters he, he will never be welcome back at the club he will never be welcome back at the stadium but I just want somebody who loves the club like we as a town love the club. Let's get it sorted, boys. Let's get it sorted.
<coughs> Alright, we're currently eight miles away from the runway. I'm going to take over now, as you can see through the uh, happy lights below. I'm going to have the uh, aeroplane lined up the runway. Lights are just coming in now. I think there's the one white there. Start doing our descent around 400 feet. Fetch the power down. Then in about 500 feet. Six miles away. Perfect. We must be there oh, now. Just uh, what the flaps on. Seventeen hundred feet. Making slight adjustments by myself up with the runway. A bit too low. Feet. Three miles away. He's power a little bit to uh, up the detent too much. One, pack, one white, three red. Still all at the moment. What would have two white, two red. Bang on the guide slope. Seven hundred feet of next lot of flaps for one and a half miles to I piece of speed.
That's not your flaps. And one mile away. Increase our speed, otherwise we're going to land short. Pitch the nose back up. Speed right down. Touch down. By the looks of it, there's nowhere to park. three parking spaces. Bring the flaps up. Turn the landing lights on. Oh. That by doing that. And off here to the left. Parking bay number Handbrake on. Then our landing lights off. Our taxi lights. And the engine off. We'll open the door so the passengers can get out. Drop the nail off. The end of our flight. But what we'll do now is uh, come out of FSX and we'll go into. I FS economy and uh, our log. We'll go and check and we'll go and check how much money we've made off this flight. We're just that tiny like a bit closer of getting back. So here we are in our payment logs. Uh the flight took us an hour and eighteen minutes. Our income was one thousand eight hundred and sixty one dollars. We had ground crew fees ten percent, which is hundred and eighty six dollars ten. So we made a grand total of $1,674.90. Put the $1,800 into our bank, we'll deposit that. Leaves us with a cash balance of $98.37. And in the bank, there's $35,584. So with that, I'll end this video. I want to thank you all for watching. Don't forget, if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell notification for any further publications and give me a thumbs up it gives my little channel that little bit of a boost I want to thank you all for watching again bye bye for now happy flightings